So today is hopefully gonna be the day to finish up the exterior. A little slower. I Hi team, I'm Sid. And I'm Mackie. For the past six years, we've been racing mountain bikes professionally. And living out of our van. On this channel, we're sharing those adventures with you. All of them. So hit subscribe and join the team. My, oh my. As time stood still, I got when van life became untenable due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we headed back to New Mexico and decided to tackle a project we've wanted to do for a while. Renovate this old rat-infested backyard shed and turn it into our dream bike workshop. Today, we're joined by a very special guest to help us out with the construction. So guess who's here? We're pretty excited. Obviously, we need a little bit of construction help. We also need tools. We're not that well equipped here for the scale of project that we are undertaking. So, awesome to have him here and we're gonna unload some tools. Setting up camp. Setting up camp. Driveway camp. Looks nice. I like your truck flap. Well, the truck flap's new. <laughs> That's the advantage of stopping on the side of the road to pee instead of stopping at rest stops. All kinds of things are laying there. <laughs> Treasures. <laughs> And I upgraded to all the Milwaukee stuff. Nice. So this is a tool that Mackie is going to absolutely drool over. Alright, we are getting to work bright and early here. Putting dad to work. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's before nine o'clock. <laughs> our first task is to examine our scrap wood pile to see what we can and cannot do with what we have. So we've fallen victim to the domino effect of projects here. We just wanted a board and now we're organizing the wood pile. Our first step was to work to extend the roof line so the new shed would still have an overhang to protect it from the elements. One on the outside of that, one on the outside and outside, both yeah. on either side, and one on the outside that. This is making me slightly nervous. So when you find the strength to really shed your skin, all you really need to do is search within. No, I mean, yeah. No. We're putting the roof partially back on now. We're gonna get another piece of plastic sheeting and then we'll move this piece over and that'll be our skylight, but we haven't found that yet. What have I got in here? Well, I'm missing one of the things I was gonna be right now. <laughs> Jim has actually done this before, you guys can tell. Okay, let's see, what do you got in there? This is, these were brought in 1986. <laughs> that was before either of us was born. <laughs> and it, and it's just, it's got a angle tool. So I always have a tiny little screwdriver because you never know when you need that. 
a small hand plane for taking edges off of things. Mm, okay, splinters. yep. Two points, very small. Always a bunch of pencils. Two chisels to wheedle my way in making things fit. Okay. And then always a very, very sharp knife, which is generally um, a razor knife. A line tool, just a, a draw knife scraper for, it, most people think of them as cabinet scrapers, but it's great for taking really, really splintery wood and knocking the splinters mm, off of mm -hmm. it. And then always at least one or two. <laughs> Tape one measures. <laughs> so I start off with two. And then you have another three pencils on this side plus a Sharpie. So you have a total of six pencils with you at any time. And this tool, this is the most amazing tool. Is that like a tiny? It's a tiny little uh, uh, bar, adjustment basically. tool, you know, and it, it, it'll do when you least expect it. <laughs> How about you, Sid? What's your tool belt look like? I've got my phone. I've got my phone. That's for drawing your line. I have a tape measure. <laughs> Even okay, it'd be better if you could work on the parts I could see without moving. I, I think it's only fitting that you sit around and watch other people work on your first day of retirement. So after extending the roof line, we set about framing up our new wall. Yeah. The first step was to mount two by four plates onto the concrete. These are 22 caliber bullets, essentially. They look just like bullets. Cool. And you basically load that thing. You put a nail in the bottom, you can see the nail. Uh huh. You put a bullet in it, and then you hit it and it explodes and shoots it down into the, the cement. Locked, loaded. Huh. Nope. nope. So this concrete screw business is proving to be Nail. a bit of a headache. You're saying that concrete too. nails. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> you said things were going really, really well. <laughs> didn't I? Didn't I? I don't you? believe in that. Anyway, we've hit a bit of a, a bit of a snag. We have a new method, guys. Thanks to the guy on the internet. Internet. And the YouTube video saved us. Robert, Robert, it. doing the search. Yep. So you drill a hole, and then you put, and you drill it into the concrete, and then you put two nails in. We're saved by YouTube. We're saved by YouTube. <laughs> likes his new brush. Do you like it, Jackie? Oh yeah, oh a ruffle. At this time of year, I can't stop asking why I'm struggling. We wanted to keep the costs down on the shed and help tidy up the yard, so our goal was to use reclaimed wood whenever we could. This led to a bit of a wrestling match as we tried to convert this giant beam into four different supports for our new wall. So this didn't work. Well, yeah, it was going to be, I mean, this is how far we got. Yep. Arriving at the brute force stage of things. Almost got it. <laughs> Woohoo! We did it! Finally did it! Hey, we have two logs. All right, let's go eat some lunch. Yeah. Um, rice and beans, gallo pinto, tortillas, pork tamales. Very New Mexico. We have to try and keep. Sometimes we Contractor's planer. What's a planer do? It basically has a revolving blade there. 
and it and it runs along that way, so we feed it in that way. The right tool for this task. A bigger said, one of these. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It is framed out. Woohoo! What is So today is hopefully gonna be the day finish up the exterior, the roof, and close the walls, and that's pretty exciting. We have organized all of our boards by height. And today we begin the bit of a game of Tetris, or a puzzle, figuring out which board can go where so that we can use the absolute minimum amount of new boards. <laughs> Just got back from an adventure. Yeah, we went on a little adventure in town, back to Old Games, which is the rough cut sawmill place. I think we're totally going for this like rustic cabin look. Yeah, I mean you it. Know? It just it looks really clean. It looks really nice, and I think we can continue that aesthetic. Oh, I was talking about how we're gonna have different sized boards. Though. Yeah, but that's what I. But I agree. Like you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Look, we actually have a roof have a over the entire thing. So the door, the door is our arch nemesis. The door weighs a lot. Yeah. So I think it's gonna be all of us working on this. We knew installing the heavy sliding door was going to be annoying and it delivered. This was one of the only areas where we significantly changed the original design of the shed. In the past, the door slid out outside the battens, making it fairly difficult to open. We decided to put those battens inside of the shed to allow the door a smoother slide and a better seal. Past, but yeah. Then it was just the finishing touches, filling the gaps in between the beams, putting on the final battens. Final piece of the puzzle. We're absolutely thrilled with how this turned out and can't thank my dad enough for coming to our rescue. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode when we get to work on the electrical and find out if our idea of one day holding a live stream in the shed was just a pipe dream.